Hello everybody, how are you doing? And welcome to today's episode of the vlog. My name is Sean and I'm a YouTuber from Edinburgh in Scotland. And in today's episode, we're talking about something a wee bit contentious, but also I think a topic that is pretty important to avoid future confusions. Because this is a question I get quite a lot, especially from people from America who have visited Scotland and were maybe a little bit surprised about the differences in the people they saw and some of the reactions they got when they asked certain questions in Scotland. And like, this is a fully loaded topic, really interesting topic actually. It's something I think we should all learn about. I definitely need to learn more about this, why things are different and why I think there is this division between the way people from other places in the world, especially America, see us and how we react to that. And it really builds on from this awesome community that I've started to build with people from around the world who are interested in my content about Scotland and all that type of stuff. Really, really find this fascinating and I'm just enjoying it immensely. So thank you so much to all you guys for joining in with this. It is great to have you here. And listen, if you're new, please do not forget, you need to hit the red subscribe button in the bottom corner. Then you will be part of the family. You will be part of the conversation going forward. I'm really enjoying this. I'm really looking forward to get to know you guys better. So I found out today, right, by total surprise, April, the month of April 2019 is the month of Scottish ancestry in America. Is that exactly right? Scottish American Heritage Month. That is pretty cool. Month of April, Scottish American Heritage Month. So congratulations everyone who is part of that. And like, let's just celebrate this. I'm quite shocked to be honest that such a thing even exists, but when you look into the, the websites that are talking about this, it actually becomes really clear like how big a thing this could be because apparently they say 10% of Americans, 10% of 300 or so million people, that's like 30 million people, are of Scottish heritage. That blows my mind. Obviously, we've only got 5 million people here in Scotland, so right away, just in America alone, we've got so many more people who celebrate the Scottish heritage than actually we have here in Scotland, so pretty cool, awesome fact. And there's also some other bizarre facts that these websites talk about. For example, I didn't even know this, but Uncle Sam apparently is Scottish. His parents came from Greenock. I don't know who Uncle Sam is, but I know he's a big deal. Maybe that is a video I need to do. I'm talking about Uncle Sam, who he was, where he came from, what he did. Because he sounds like an important fellow, right? Anyway, that's for another day. Because in today's vlog, I want to talk specifically about Scottish people and how they react when Americans specifically come to Scotland and like have certain expectations about the way we are and operate and stuff like that. Just to be absolutely frank and honest with you guys, a lot of people here in Scotland cringe when they hear people, especially from America, talking about certain expectations they have of what Scotland is and who we are, right? It's just a fact people here are like that. And I know it's a really, really touchy subject and it could have the potential to offend both Scottish people and Americans equally. But listen, I think the context is important. We need to talk about this, it's fascinating, right? But I do think the title of my video could be a little bit misleading perhaps because like, Scottish people don't necessarily reject Americans when they come here, that's not true. Actually, what they reject is the kind of image that people from America tend to have of Scotland and Scottish people. That is more is more rejected. And guys, what I'm talking about isn't necessarily my opinion because I'm really open to these discussions, but a lot of people here are like that. And a lot of you guys who have come here already know this and have experienced it. But anyway, nonetheless, it's Scottish Heritage Month in America. I thought to celebrate this amazing fact, right, I'm going to be giving away a couple of merch items from my store, which contain a lot of kind of Scottish American joint cultural themes. And I'll be giving away details of how you can enter to win some awesome merch, totally for free at the end of the video. Context is so important on this. And I think it's actually gonna take two videos to do this properly, right? Today I'm gonna to explain the background context of why things are different and why the expectations are certainly separate and the actual specific things that Scottish people get annoyed with will be covered in a next episode. There are literally hundreds maybe even thousands of Scottish parties and festivals that happen in America every year. I'm going to one of them this year, I'm going to North Carolina, and I can't wait. But that is replicated around the States, especially in places where you've got higher levels of Scottish heritage, right? I'm just so amazed to see all these parties and festivals, and I want to join in with all of them. I want to do a tour of America and really see all of them and kind of document that in like a major video series one day. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I will be able to make that happen. But being honest, guys, listen, those types of festivals and the way you celebrate Scottish heritage like that is not celebrated here, even in the slightest, nowhere near in the same fashion. We do have like Highland Games here, for example, in Scotland. Even just down the road in Ingolston, right, right outside Edinburgh, they have one of the biggest ones, I think, in the world. Big Highland Games events. But do Scottish people, do people from Edinburgh, my city, go? 
Not really. Scottish people, they don't get involved in these types of things that often. So while you guys like at these festivals and when you come to Scotland, you'll talk about your clan affiliations and your tartans, for example, and you expect us to kind of know about these things, when in reality, Scottish people have no scooby-doo about clans, most Scottish people, and guys, I'm generalizing right now and throughout this video, but most Scottish people don't know about their clans, don't know what their clan tartan color is, or even if it exists. That is a reality. Most people in Scotland don't even know that's a thing because it's not a part of Scottish culture today. Most people here, if they know about it, think it's something that died long ago. And establishing the context of how that could have happened, right? We have to look at the modern day education system. Things are a little bit different right now today as in what is happening in schools at this moment, right? But when I went to school in the 90s, there's a lot of discrepancy between different schools and areas around Scotland as to who got taught what, okay? But I think I could safely say that a lot of people in Scotland do not know our own history. And a lot of that is because we simply did not get taught it in school. I grew up in the 90s. Like I said, I went to school in Edinburgh in the 90s, the Scottish capital. And like I can say in my school and most of the kids I knew in Edinburgh did not get taught anything about Scottish history whatsoever. So there is a big level of ignorance of Scottish history right here in this country, right? We don't understand it, we don't know it. There are people who studied in different regions of Scotland who were taught more in individual schools in Scotland. I think it depends on teachers or whatever, but largely most people in Scotland don't know Scottish history at all. And I put my hand up, I am definitely included in that, okay? The Battle of Culloden, a major massive event that changed the course of Scotland's history, I would say. I mean, most people in Scotland wouldn't know anything about Culloden, wouldn't know how to place it on a map. And I couldn't either, right? I learned about Culloden. You know how I learned about Culloden? Because of an American author called Diana Gabaldon wrote about it in her books, Outlander, which became a TV series. And that is how I learned about Culloden. I'd only been there for the first time last year because of the show. I mean, that's quite sad, but that is literally what we're dealing with here in Scotland. But we've also got apathy. A lot of people in Scotland are definitely apathetic when it comes to history and certainly towards Gaelic as well. And we already know what the Scottish independence result was, right? We will touch more on independence movement in a little second, okay? But given that level of support for being British and Britishness, right? Not just today, but also in history, right? Here in the Central Belt, Edinburgh, Glasgow, the main population areas for Scotland haven't only been unionist nowadays, but if you look way back in history, Edinburgh certainly, if you look back at the Jacobite era, it was largely Highlanders that supported that type of movement, right? In Edinburgh, we've always been in Edinburgh, a pretty unionist UK type of city. And it was the Highlanders who backed these movements, like the Jacobites, for example, who were the ones who either emigrated out of Scotland who or were kicked out, right? It is an important point because nowadays, the most of the population lives in the Central Belt, Edinburgh, Glasgow, okay? But back in those days, three, four, 500 years ago, the Highlands were thriving, right? There was a massive population of Highlanders. They lived among the clan systems. They farmed the land. It was bustling. It was a really important part of Scottish population, right? But that is gone. All of those people, all those communities moved away, emigrated, and went off to the United States of America in the early days of the colony forming, went to Canada and other places in the world. And even back then in those days, people from the Central Belt, Edinburgh, looked upon Highlanders in a derogatory way. I think it would be very fair to say that. So there's always been that division in Scotland between Lowlanders and Highlanders. After the Highland clearances, the Highlands became pretty much deserted, right? So that culture of Highlanders basically no longer existed. It went to America, it went to Canada. So really, the culture that you guys celebrate in North America is essentially that Highland culture which doesn't exist really here anymore. Guys, listen, I think Outlander is a tremendous series. Of course, it is fictional, okay? It's not all real, but it tells the basic principle of the story of Scottish Highlanders during the Jacobite era and how they ended up having to go over to North America and start a colony. They actually started a colony in Outlander in North Carolina. I would highly recommend any of you guys who haven't watched it to check it out for that reason alone, okay? I think the interesting thing, those people who emigrated, those Highlanders who went to North America, even though they were in a new land, they were starting a new life and would never ever return to Scotland, they held on to their traditions, their cultures that they had at that time as Highlanders, and it's never left until today. And that is a basically a carry on of what you guys in North America are celebrating as Scottish culture. You know, skip forward to today in present time Scotland, however, and I think our country, Scotland now, has evolved in a different path to how that culture moved on. That is a clear separation in the fact that the way people with Scottish heritage in America celebrate the Scottish culture that 
that they've always known, right? It literally does not exist in Scotland anymore. The modern Scottish culture is so different. Like it's almost like two different evolutions of Scottish people. I know we kind of tie back into similar themes and types of people and all the rest of it, but basically that's what's happened. And let me just give you a few real life examples of how that has worked out today. What I'm about to tell you guys is not necessarily my own personal beliefs on everything. It's just facts about how things have happened, okay? So, Scottish independence, the Scottish independence movement, the referendum we had in 2014. Oh boy, you now there's a heavy topic that brings up all kinds of emotions in people from Scotland. Yeah, tread carefully, basically. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna have to do, okay? It has re-emerged recently, um, but I wanna talk specifically about what happened in 2014. I think it's safe to say that most people with Scottish heritage around the world, especially in North America, were probably quite keen on the idea of Scotland becoming an independent country. And in fact, I've received so many comments from people from this community who have said, how come you didn't do it? Why did you not do it? Now, of course, the reasons why Scotland did not vote for independence are many, vast, and complicated. It's a real complicated issue, okay? But I wanted to tell you a couple of things that you might not know. Again, for context. Okay, so would I be right in thinking that a large proportion of people who are of Scottish heritage in America fall under the brackets of being conservative? I mean, I don't know if that's definitely a thing, right? I'm just judging this based on comments I receive on YouTube, for example. It certainly seems to be the place where Scottish people emigrated to in North America became quite conservative states. And if what I just said is true, then the following really goes to outline the differences between the two cultures, okay? Conservative people in Scotland are largely the ones who voted for Scotland to remain as a member of the United Kingdom. And if you think that's bizarre, okay, it's actually titled in the main Conservative Party's name, okay? The Conservative Party in Scotland, which is a branch of the main Conservative Party in the UK, which Theresa May is ahead of at the moment, their actual title is the Scottish Conservatives and Unionist Party. So Conservatives in Scotland largely voted and are largely backers of the UK in union. And that has always been the case. Meanwhile, the people who voted for Scottish independence, largely speaking, in the main political party, who back that are pretty left of centre. Probably something similar to what you guys might refer to as liberal. It's not as straight cut as that, but that's largely speaking, Scottish independence backers were on that side of things. And while most Scottish Conservatives backed remaining as part of the United Kingdom, they were also more likely to vote for Brexit in Scotland, while people who supported Scottish independence are more likely to have voted for Scotland to remain a member of the EU. And actually, over 60% of people in Scotland voted to remain in the EU as well. So that is a muddy picture, right? <laughs> but it does give you a bit of an idea of how the, the kind of scenario is here in Scotland at the moment, in terms of our cultural and political makeup. And then if you look at this kind of thought and image of Scotland being the rebel and a rebellious nature that people always have of Scotland, like, William Wallace and Freedom and Braveheart and all the rest of it. I think Scotland's independence movement is quite keen, to be honest with you, to kind of squash that image we have of Scotland because it could be portrayed as being a bad look. And the reason for that is, if you think about it, is Scotland wanting to be independent because it wants to manage its own affairs or is Scotland wanting to be independent because it has a grudge against the UK, Britain, and wants to avenge it? I think the latter of these two options is not something Scottish independence backers would really want to be portrayed. It just doesn't go down well in the media, it doesn't go down well in the UK context in terms of getting new votes and all that kind of stuff. So, now that you guys know that, it would be really interesting to get your thoughts on what you just heard, right? Is that something you already understood or is that something that was new to you? Down in the comments, I would love to know your thoughts. But I think it definitely does highlight a real difference between Scottish culture, the modern Scotland as we know it now, and then the Scottish cultures who were forced off the land hundreds of years ago and had to go to new places and basically start new lives. And as I said, I'm making massive generalizations with what I'm saying here, but I think this does get to the heart, does get to the point of why there are differences sometimes in how Americans expect Scottish people to be and how Scottish people are often dismissive of the way Americans portray us or think of us. I know this is kind of like a long-winded conversation, but I think it's definitely necessary as to what we're talking about here, the crux of the matter, and it's gonna lead on nicely for when I actually talk about, you know, the specific things that Americans say that tend to make Scottish people cringe a little bit. And I think the thing is for Americans, when you guys come to Scotland, there's a little bit of a, a difference in expectations versus reality. You guys have probably seen that meme that goes around the internet, right? Expectations versus reality. That, I think that definitely is pertinent in this context. How can we think of a Scottish version of that? Let's make one right now. Yeah, this makes sense. This'll do it. Expectations versus reality Scottish style. <laughs> it's shite being Scottish! I'm having a bit of a laugh here, but this is kind of really what it is, right? What 
people think of Scotland and how we actually are. I think modern Scottish people, most people here, really reject this idea of the, the tartan, kilt-wearing, shortbread images of Scotland. I don't really know why that's the case. I don't think people here should reject that. I think we should celebrate it and really understand where it comes from. But the problem is, and that is the problem, that people don't understand where that image comes from. They think it's an invention when actually it's not something that's really been invented now. It's something that is more deeply rooted over hundreds of years. Today, Scottish people like to think of themselves as a kind of a modern society of people moving forward and totally rejecting that kind of old image of how we were as Scottish people. And to be honest with you, that's really the crux of the matter and crux of the story, right? There is this difference in the way that Americas think the Scottish people are based on how the Scottish people were and how they were when they emigrated in that culture that's continued and how modern Scotland is. There's a definite clash there in expectations reality. But like, as I said, I think this is a great shame. I want to learn more about this. I want to get that discussion going. I am fascinated by these kind of Scottish cultures who emigrated hundreds of years ago and what has happened to them now and how you guys celebrate it. I really want to get into that deeply and understand it. And I think more people in Scotland need to know this because actually, that culture, while it doesn't always survive that well here in Scotland, it has survived in other places. So I think instead of these two different ideals of what Scotland is getting further apart, I want to bring them closer together, learn more, and open that discussion, right? As part of this American Heritage Month in April, right? How amazing is that? What an opportunity it is for us to come together and learn more. Um, so I'm thinking, right, I've got a number of merch items in my store that really kind of go with that theme of Scottish and American cultures coming together. I'm going to give away two t-shirts to start off with now to celebrate this. There might be more in the very, very near future, but right now I'm gonna give away a couple of t-shirts. And I'm also gonna start a brand new kind of mailing list of people who are interested in this theme, in this discussion, that we can continue. And for anybody who joins up with this mailing list, down below, the link will be there. You'll be automatically entered for the draw to win a couple of t-shirts. I'll announce the winners this Sunday. How about that? Another great way for us to communicate and continue with this discussion, I think. Anyway, guys, like I said, this video has two parts because in tomorrow's episode on this theme, I'm going to be talking about the specifics of the things that Americans who come to Scotland who are of Scottish ancestry might say that make Scottish people cringe. And like I said, this is not my personal belief because I definitely don't follow this line of thinking, but speaking to a lot of people in Scotland on this, people who work in tourism, etc., I know how it is. So there will be a part two to this video coming up in the very near future on this channel. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please do drop your comments down below because I'd love to know what you think about all of this. And until the next adventure, I hope you have a good night, morning, evening, afternoon, or whatever time of day it is, wherever you are in the world. Take care.